Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and we're going to be taking out a very strong aircraft at tier 10. This is going to be the Hunter. So, a lot of people feel like they're suffering through the Seahawk, and I think it's mostly because you're really anticipating this thing. Four 30mm Aiden cannons mounted in the nose with a combination of bombs and rockets. Finally, you can get both. Uh, in a very quick reload. Well, a pretty quick reload. It's 120 seconds at base, but we've got this thing set up to reload even faster. I really don't want to go after that mine, so we're going to try and finish up with this sight right here as fast as possible. This aircraft is pretty quick. Good climb rate, good overall top speed, and of course, massive firepower with these Aidens. They are a little bit to tame them, and that's a usual, it's usually the complaint I hear about this aircraft is I just can't get these guns to do what I want them to. But, you know, much like the Jawa, if you can get these guns to make contact, you pretty much deleted the target you're going after. So, there it is. Good hits. Was it enough to take him out? Not quite. So, I'm going to have to deviate away from that guy. Hopefully someone will get him. Yeah, they did. So let's go ahead and burn over there as fast as we can. Again, I said we got good acceleration. We're up into the 500s fairly easily, and we can even push beyond that if need be. We are running polished skin as well as operated engine in order to get these results. But we really need to get one of these bombers knocked out. That's a javelin. That's going to be a major threat to our buddies up there. Is that enough to be able to take that whole section? Almost. Almost. Miscalculated. Let's get back around and see if we can do something about that. Cluster of rockets from our rocket clusters that we fire here. Looks pretty cool and is pretty effective. We got lots of ground attack targets we can go after here. IL-40s. Again, with heavy aircraft guns, we can make pretty short work of those guys. There's another one right over here. And the other nice thing is that the air-to-ground rockets on this thing actually double as air-to-air -air rockets as well. So if we get cheeky with one of these guys, we can make that happen as well. And he is pretty much on the ground right now. Guns overheat quick, but they also cool off relatively quickly as well. And we're able to make short work of that aircraft. It's an FJ-1 over here. I want to make sure I'm not the only one engaging this craft. Because it is a very dangerous bird if it does get on my 6. But he'd have to make it around to my 6 to begin with. I don't want to go pick up their garrison because if we pick up their garrison, then we're really just going to have a short match. Uh, we are going up against two people, an LA-160 as well as a BVP-215, which is another multi-roll. There's the LA-160. We're going to call him out as a priority target. He also is carrying 30 millimeter cannons. One of his major strengths besides his maneuverability is his speed, but we have taken that away from him. Oh, those guns. Just imagine having a J7W3 that actually has some speed and decent air-to-ground ordnance, and that's what you're getting with this aircraft. Bombs are just about reloaded, even though we're not going to get a chance to use them again. Unfortunately, we are in a battle where there just isn't a lot of ground target flipping. This is going to be more of a take-and-hold scenario. Historically, this aircraft was actually an intercept platform. It was set to ground alert in many sites across Britain, and the guys were ready to just launch at a moment's notice. The two bulbous sections underneath the nose of the aircraft were called Sabrinas by the pilots of the aircraft. Go ahead and look that history up, kind of hilarious. But the idea was that these 30 millimeter Aidens dropped these huge shell casings and they ended up hitting this air brake in the middle of flight and it ended up dinging it and causing damage and it would actually scratch the skin of the fuselage. So they put in these bulbous sections here to essentially collect the shells so they'd fall in there instead of fall out the bottom of the aircraft. Alright. Let's see if... Let's see if we can engage a bomber. This might be ill-advised, but we're going to go for it. We got 
the same guns that the Javelin has, but on a multi-roll. It's also the same guns that you get on the Swift, but the Swift only gets two of these. So if we can tame these beasts, yep, we can take down a bomber. We pushed our altitude envelope, but I just want to show you what it's capable of, not necessarily the way that you really should be flying it, which is going to be, you know, around 6,000 feet or so is going to be comfortable enough for it to be able to do its primary job. And multi-rolls, it's actually built into their design when you look at kind of the way the wheels are set up here. You get points for defending zones towards that wheel of what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, speaking of which, it looks like I'm not paying attention. We got the BVP215 on our six here. And he's going to make pretty short work of us, especially since he has a tail gunner. So we're going to have to pay attention to that. We just lost our engine and our tail. We got the tail back now and the engine. Can we get around on this guy? Uh, not quite. Like I said, he does have a tail gunner and he could make really short work of us, but fortunately we were able to dodge that encounter and we picked up a McCampbell. I got a little bit complacent at the end, but I think I really highlighted the strengths of the Hunter, the air to ground ordnance, and really those 30 millimeter guns. It takes some time to get used to and kind of tame them, but once you kind of sync up with them, they really do get a lot of damage out very quickly. The air to ground rockets, they're, they are very unique. There isn't any other air to ground rockets like these. And again, they kind of double as air to air rockets as well. So we're going to take a quick look at them here. They're going to be the Asura FL or S-U-R-A FLs. Uh, these are doing 600 damage a rocket, 98 foot blast radius. So it's a pretty decent blast radius. And they launch in clusters of four for a total of, what is it? Eight launches, right? Let me see here. Yeah, eight times four is 32. Good job, V. Public math always works. Uh, I am a little bit uh, perturbed by the visual of the way that the rockets launch because it they actually will launch these top sets and work their way down, leaving all the bottom rockets just floating in midair. And that bugs the heck out of me. It just looks really weird. Uh, I would think that it would launch from the bottom up, guys. Like, come on. Like, how hard is that to change the program? Again, we're looking at 500 pound bombs, very traditional 500 pound bombs, 5,200 damage, 246 foot blast radius. It's exactly what you're expecting. Uh, the reload with my setup, like I said, it's 120 seconds at base, but I did run with the hardened pylons to get as quick of a reload as I could. So we're down to 103 seconds on the bombs and 91 on the rockets. So they're coming back pretty quick. Um, and usually the way that I go into a site, if I'm trying to like get a key section, is I'm going to drop both bombs while I'm flying kind of at a little bit of a downward angle. And then as I get closer, I'm going to use the rockets. So what I've ended up finding is that that amount of time between pickling off the bombs and actually shooting the rockets... I end up having the same reload time most of the time. Like they both come back at the same time because I've usually dropped the bombs about 12 seconds before I've run dry on the rockets. Additionally, the ability to put these guns on ground targets, they are doing really good, really good work. So let's go ahead and look at our post game results a little bit and see what type of ground damage we did considering we only really launched one volley. We only killed two ground targets, uh, medium, uh, one medium ground target. I'm kind of confused why it says that. There we go. We also took out a large ground target as well. We did a total of 13,959 ground damage, but Really, that was kind of spread out between two sets of structures, and we definitely could have gotten a lot more damage potential out of this thing, because as you see, the potential damage available on this airframe on the right-hand side is, what, 35,000 and some change? So there's some pretty decent firepower available with each one of those reloads. We managed to pick up 380 capture points, but a lot of it was coming from killing those ground attack aircraft, which is why we're able to pick up five uh, destroyed while defending. So like I said, the multi-rolls are built to capture sectors and also hold sectors, really for the ability to kill those ground attackers as they roll in. And we also managed to take out a bomber as well. So 
Like I said, the thing's got a ton of firepower and definitely can turn the tables on a lot of different platforms. Although, if you're not paying attention and you let a BVP-215 get on you, you're really going to pay for it, as we saw. So, the Hunter. The Hunter... I think it's a stellar platform, probably one of the best, if not the best, multi-roll at tier 10. Um, guys, go ahead and discuss down below. I'm sure somebody disagrees or really agrees, and I'd love to hear the discussions. So here it is, the Hunter. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.